Welcome to the Event House channel. If you're new here, I'm your host, Jill Goldfein, and this is your home for all things hospitality. I am so excited to tell you that love can exist during a pandemic. I can't wait for you to see my interview with David Merrill on how he's able to make wedding days very special, even when it's partly virtual. Then we're going to hear from Joanne Collada, who was furloughed and is now running a successful bakery business. Make sure you stay to the very end of this video because we are giving away a yummy prize just in time for Valentine's Day. First, we're going to have some good news snapshots of our hospitality colleagues who got married during the pandemic. So let's get started. Congratulations to everyone who got engaged or married during the pandemic. Your love inspires us all. Now, let's hear from David Merrill at AOO Events. In keeping with the Valentine's theme of love today, I'll be talking with David Merrill. His Los Angeles-based cutting-edge event design company, AOO Events, is so proud of their production successes before the pandemic hit. We'll hear about that and how in 2020, David had to invent new ways to stay on top of mind by producing fantastic hybrid weddings, among other things. Hey, thank you so much for joining me today. If um, you could give us a little uh, background of your professional career leading up to 2020. I cater till the end of the 90s where um, you know, we, we had our own catering kitchen. I had then brought in a partner who I kind of grew into full production along as known as a caterer doing mostly on the social side. Um, and then 9-11 happened and my entire life and career and offerings changed and then started growing again and I redeveloped a brand new relationship as a, a known for event decor and design within the corporate world, won tons of awards. Um, and built back up to 18 employees. And then the economic downturn happened and, oh. and our company evolved into something else again. Um, and basically it was more live production um, with broadcast capabilities, you know, doing the live award shows. After 2008, 2009 and business started to build back up, we grew back up and we, we got up to about, I think we were 16 employees when uh, in March when we heard about COVID-19. I knew exactly what I was going to go through because I'd gone through it three times before. And I knew that we already had a broadcast background, so we could easily go into live broadcast. We probably launched a new called Virtual Engagement Strategies within a month of that finding out that COVID was going to be a thing in March. Oh, so that brings up why we had to do this, this virtual wedding. When this one couple and I started talking, and I get this completely. The bride side, she always had in her mind that she wanted her dad to give her away. She wanted her family and her friends there. So I had probably presented the idea to her in May and about, and they did it because they knew what I was capable of. And it was actually the first time I had done anything like this. We did it only in the Zoom platform. So the same Pluto platform we have now. Uh -huh. But I knew enough tricks and trades with this and a few and a lot of things I could do to manipulate it to turn it into an actual legitimate event. Um, I, I, this was done with myself with two computers, one guy who was a camera guy and sound guy who captured the ceremony and the minister and just the family. No one else was there. The wedding was live. We did, we created slideshows at the beginning. So when they got on at the beginning of the ceremony, there was a title slide saying, welcome to Dan and Catherine's wedding. Um, the ceremony will begin shortly. Um, it had a slideshow that played through slides of the kids and the family combining together messages for them. We inserted, um, we inserted a lot of um, uh, information slides on how to navigate Zoom because we had a lot of older folks on there. The camera was, um, you could even see in these two preview things, one camera is tied on the groom, the bride, the groom, and the minister. 
One is a yes, wide shot the of the entire up, And one's the more panoramic. And then there's another one, specific shots. Like if someone was speaking, zooms in on that person. She wanted to walk down an aisle. I'm like, okay, well, there's no aisle. <laughs> so she she literally, we had to cue this, right? And she had certain music she wanted to walk down to. So, okay, we played the music. We started the music. We brought the camera on. She was standing just to the left where the little girl on the left is of the, uh -huh. of the two boys in the throat. She was standing yeah. right there. The camera caught on to catch her. She was she was meant to stay there for stand there for a second, play the music, and then she slowly walked her five steps over to him. That oh. was it. So we were actually able to capture that one moment. Um, the other part she requested is like, God, I really want to have my first dance. I said, okay, well, you can't walk off the aisle, kiss the bride, walk down and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So why don't we just clear the floor and have the first dance right there while we're still live? And that's what happened. We wanted to create a ceremony. And this was a suggestion I had that actually allowed the kids to be part of the ceremony and realize that they're part of this wedding too. So each one of them had their own color. And there's a segment in where the priest comes forward and all the kids gather around that. And one by one, they pour all their sand in. And then there's layers of different colors yes. of sand, the whole thing. This now sits on their mantle at all times. And it oh. became part of the ceremony. So it was a symbolism of all these all these individuals coming together as one family. Oh, I love that. that is the breakout rooms are just like, you know, guest tables. So there's a breakout room for the Merrills and there's a breakout room for, you know, wherever the families are, breakout rooms for the different um, families there. Oh, yeah. And they could go and actually visit, with, they could go in, in their own individual Zooms rooms, the breakout rooms, and actually talk like they were at their own table. All of them loaded back into the main room. Um, Dan and Kathy got back on, um, gave their wishes. They all visited as a group for a very brief period of time. And then we did a cake cutting. Where when we do come out of this, how do you incorporate some of the things that you've learned during the past year into how you go forward? What we're seeing is that virtual will stick around and we are, we are going to have pivoting out of this, then we're going to have a new virtual production division, which I don't believe was ever going to go away. I, I want to thank you so much for your time and oh, sharing your story and I hope it inspires other people. Thanks again to David Merrill from AOO Events. It was great to meet him and share the success he's been having in a virtual world. I hope this shot of inspiration ignites some passion in you, not just on Valentine's Day, but every day. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Love is definitely in the air, and we are going to make this vlog even sweeter by giving away a Valentine's Bundt cake created especially for our viewers by Everyday Kitchen. Stay tuned to the end of this video for details on how to win. Joanne Collada from Bright Box Bakery is going to share her story today. Joanne has an extensive hotel background, but always had a passion for baking. With food sensitivities in her family, she has worked to make gluten-free cakes that are disguised as delicious mainstream cakes. Here's Joanne. If you could just tell me a little bit about your hospitality background and how you got to the beginning of 2020. Gosh, I think I started hospitality. I caught the bug, bug when I worked at Chili's when I was 16 years old um, <laughs> in the restaurant. I did everything from hostess to cook to waitress. So um, when it came time for college, I knew that I kind of was done with science and math in my life. And my dad told me I needed to look at an in-state school. So we lived in Virginia and Virginia Tech had a hospitality program. So it seemed kind of a natural progression. So I studied hotel restaurant management at Virginia Tech. And when I graduated from there, I got a job with Hilton. Um, and I worked with Hilton for 18 years, I think something close to that. So just, I went from a catering sales manager uh, for 10 years into the group sales arena where we're selling like big conferences. And I was primarily in the sales field. So um, then COVID happened and it kind of helped me to kind of reimagine my life, um, maybe fulfill some dreams that I'd always had, but, you know, just kind of kept taking the next step in the corporate ladder and, and uh, enjoying my weekends off and things like that. But, um, you know, I always had a passion for baking. So that's kind of what landed me into uh, Brightbox. Okay. And so were you still with Hilton at the time at the, earlier this year? Actually, no, after Hilton, I, um, the first, uh, downturn and I think it was what 2008 when the economy crashed mm -hmm. I was working at the Waldorf Astoria in New York and I handled the financial market which is um 
something that basically disappeared similar yes. to, you know, yes. dissimilar to COVID, but, you know, a, an economic downturn. And so it gave me an opportunity to move hotels. I had a recruiter reach out and I moved over to IHG. I worked at the Crown Plaza Times Square. And from there, I just, um, we're, we're in New York and my husband works in New York. So it wasn't really a possibility to look at different states for jobs. So I did a little bit of jumping between companies, but I went over to Morgan's Hotel Group, which was a lifestyle, I think it's SEB now, or um, actually a core owns that collection of hotels now. Um, and then I went into the global sales field, was recruited by Associated Luxury Hotels International, which is a wonderful um, independent global mm -hmm. sales team. And from there, uh, Omni, I went over to Omni as a regional director, had an opportunity there to manage a team. Um, and that's really where I have been for the last four years, loving it, enjoying working with a global sales team um, of 15 people. And then unfortunately, COVID just kind of tore us away from that. Yes. So were, were you laid off or furloughed or is there something? To uh, I was, my position was eliminated. You know, I kind of was in that, that range. I didn't have any direct client base. I was managing a team of global sellers and our meetings business just went from 100% to 20% or less, you know, just disappeared. The first thing that I said when I, when that happened was it's time to start my bakery, you know, and then I spent the next few months just figuring out, okay, is there an ability for me to pivot into a new industry? So I made a lot of connections in different industries. And I, it just came back to the fact that I'm a hospitality person at heart going. So, you know, we decided with COVID the storefront probably isn't the best way to start. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, again, this kind of gives me control of some scheduling um, and really started looking to, to work with B2B customers, you know, to, to start, I thought, well, what better thing to start is, you know, kind of a pre-packaged delicious item that you can offer to a guest in a VIP amenity or to a conference or to drop ship a virtual conference, um, right. you know, and it's gluten-free, but the goal is really to have it be attractive and accessible to everybody. So just because it's gluten-free doesn't mean if you're not gluten sensitive, you can't eat it. And I think it fulfills a need right now. I think that, you know, again, so many times you're in a conference and you're checking all those boxes about the allergens. I mean, what better thing to do is not to have to check a box, not to have to worry. This is a product that everyone can enjoy. And yeah. So tell me uh, some, some plans, how this you anticipate, I guess, this going into 2021. But we feel pretty good about it. Um, and into 2021, we're just looking to continue to fulfill orders and launch our kind of business campaign. Um, or, you know, what better time to make a New Year's resolution about going gluten-free than the new year? Yes. Uh, and it's packaged in a way that, you know, if, if you were going to send an amenity from a hotel, the front desk person or the kitchen person doesn't have to touch it and rewrap it. And, yeah, and that it's beautifully exactly. Packaged. I think that gives you a leg up with your hospitality background. And in this time where it's best that the fewer hands that touch something, the better. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today and sharing your story. I'm thrilled to have gotten to know you and Excellent. And spread the good word and promote your bakery. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much, Jill. Thanks, Joanne, for speaking with me today and sharing such an inspiring story. Our industry colleagues are so creative and resilient. We can really do all kinds of amazing things. I will keep making these videos. So please like, subscribe, and share your story with us. I know you will be so happy to hear about Bernard Howe. Bernard and I met through Instant Messenger when I was working on another vlog episode, which sparked him to watch our channel and want to become a part of it. This is his remarkable story. Bernard has been in hospitality for over four decades, started out as a teenage caterer, and most recently in hotel sales in Washington, D.C., until he was laid off in March of 2020. Although a scary and uncertain time, he was able to start caring for his mother and reassess his professional priorities going forward, always with a positive outlook. In September 2020, he hosted a few friends and dug out an old pound cake recipe from his father, so he served that. For the next few cakes, he added his own gourmet flavors and ingredients, baked it in a bunt pan for a unique presentation, and word started spreading through social media. 
you can see by these pictures, they are as appealing to the eyes as they are delicious. You can order through his website or taste for yourself at Magnolias on King in Alexandria, Virginia. He is also expanding his skills and exposure by teaching cooking and baking classes online at Prince George's Community College. Bernard was so inspired by our vlog that he wanted to give something back. He will be making a special Valentine's cake for one of our lucky viewers. For your chance to win, subscribe to our channel, then follow us on Instagram, like and tag your friends in the comments. The lucky viewer will be chosen at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on February 10th, so check back to our Instagram page to see who won. Thanks for watching everyone. See you next week.